What's up guys, Andrew Bainey here, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys my guitar collection as of December 2019. I've done a guitar collection video for the past two years, I'm pretty sure, but my guitar collection is always changing, growing, shrinking, things are new, things are old. It's always changing, so I'd show you guys what I have in my current collection. If there's any guitar that is not currently shown in this video, it means I do not have it any longer. Um, I'm always buying and selling gear, so if it's not here, I probably sold it or gave it away. Okay, so first up is an incomplete guitar. This is actually a guitar kit made by a company I work for. The company is called Precision Guitar Kits. Um, they make guitar kits, it's pretty self-explanatory. Most of the time uh, we make stuff like kind of, you know, Gibson and Fender-ish stuff, let's say, like, you know, classic single cuts, Telecaster looking things, but this was our first foray into a more modern guitar and of course their first time doing a seven string. So I'm pretty sure no one else has ordered one yet, but this is one of the examples of what a seven string kit would look like. This is called the M7. Um, I got it in a single cut because I really like how Telecasters look and this is obviously kind of designed in that way. Um, it's not done yet. As you can see, I've got some work to do. Uh, everything is pretty much installed, except I don't have the pickups wired up yet, um, and I'm missing a ferrule. Uh, I've been doing a video series on my channel explaining how I'm building this thing, so if you're interested in that, definitely go check out those progress videos, but yeah. So this is a Precision Guitar Kits M7 kit. It was painted by my fiance Serena, pretty special guitar to me. Um, I can't wait to finally finish it up. This one has the Seymour Duncan Jupiter in the bridge and the Seymour Duncan Sentient in the neck. Shout out to Seymour Duncan for hooking me up with these pickups. I'm really excited to hear how this uh, Jupiter sounds. I've never heard it outside of other people's YouTube demos, so really excited to get this going. It's taking much longer than I thought it was going to. But yeah, so this is the first guitar I wanted to show you guys. Again, it's not done yet, but hopefully it will be very soon. Next up is this Matte Black Beauty. This is a Solar Guitars A1.8C. The C stands for carbon because it is carbon black. Uh, it's not necessarily matte, but it is a satin finish, which I really, really like. It looks super, super sleek. Um, I'm not usually into all black guitars, but for some reason, this one in particular looks super badass. And this one kind of has a cool story behind it. So uh, this past NAM in January 2019, um, I actually got to meet up with Ola England because he had a little meet and greet type thing in uh, his apartment where he also showed off all of the new 2019 Solar Guitars models at the time. And this was one of the first ones that caught my eye because at that point in time, there were no Solar Guitars eight strings. And of course, when I saw that he was making an eight string, I knew that I had to have it. So I kept in contact with him after NAM, and eventually they released the guitar. And then they had a B-Stock sale and uh, Ola was kind enough to send me over one of the B-Stock eight strings. So that's the story behind this guy. Uh, this one is tuned to drop E. It's completely stock. I haven't done any modifications to it. It's got the Evertune bridge, so it always stays in drop E tuning because that's the tuning I most commonly use on eight string guitar. Um, what else we got here? It has the Ernie Ball strings. I think I'm using a nine to 74, I'm pretty sure, but don't quote me on that. Um, but yeah, everything else is pretty standard. It's got the Solar Guitars, uh, Grover locking tuners, Evertune bridge, Duncan Solar pickups. That's pretty much it. It's eight strings, it's stealthy, and it's badass. All right, moving right along to the next Solar Guitar in the collection. This is the Solar Guitars A2.6. So the A2 series is their, let's call it their lower end models. Um, basically the way that they name them is if it's A2, it's cheaper, and if it's A1, it's kind of the more premium one. So that's why that one was an A1.8, and this is A2.6. So this one's a six string guitar. I have it tuned to drop E and or drop A sharp using the Ernie Ball Mammoth Slinky Strings. Um, this one is pretty bare bones because again, it is the cheaper model. It's got this beautiful lemon neon matte finish, which I absolutely love. Um, in some pictures, it kind of looks green, but it's definitely yellow as you can see here. Um, again, same as the other one, got the stock, everything. It's got a, their own version of a hardtail bridge, which is kind of like a hip shot, but not. Um, this one does not have locking tuners. They're just standard Grover tuners. Um, and again, the Solar Duncan pickups. Uh, I really like this guitar. It's very simple, straight to the point, and I love it. I have no complaints about this guitar. I do, actually, I don't even know. I was gonna say maybe I'll swap the pickups for some Seymour Duncans at some point in time, but I really do like how this sounds, and it sounds really, really good in that low drop E, drop A sharp tuning for some reason. That seems to really resonate with this guitar. So yeah, 
another solo guitar, and another Happy Andrew. And last but not least in my solar guitars collection out of the three of them, this is the A1.7BD. The BD stands for Black Distressed because as you can see, it has this beautiful swamp ash finish where you can actually see the grain of the swamp ash through the finish, uh, you know, and you can actually feel it too, which is really cool. I have a couple of guitars that are like this, um, but I've always been a fan of it. Uh, this one is brand new. I just got it uh, late last week, so I have, don't have much playtime on this yet. I really love how they added in the kind of worn, distressed steel finish on this. Super cool. It's on the bridge, the uh, single volume knob, and of course the locking tuners. These ones again are the Grover locking tuners, same as the A1.8. Um, again, Evertune. Uh, this one is tuned to drop A because just like with my eight string, my most commonly used seven string tuning is drop A. So of course with Evertune guitars, I always keep them in my most common tunings because that's what I'm gonna be in most of the time. Um, again, this one's all stock. It's got the Duncan Solar pickups once again. In this one, I am considering getting the Seymour Duncan Omega bridge pickup in here because I have another seven string that's in drop A that I'll show you guys in a little bit that has that Omega bridge and I really, really love how it sounds. So it'd be cool to have two guitars that both have that pickup in it. Um, again, with this being an Evertune guitar, this will probably be my new go-to for tracking because it'll never go out of tune. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. Swamp Ash body, maple neck, ebony fretboard, Lumen Lay side dots. Um, yeah, just an absolute beast and a little brother to my eight string. Okay, next up is a sparkly, sparkly boy. I've had this one since last year, but I have changed a lot on it over the past year. So this is an LTD SCT-607B, which is an absolutely ridiculous name, but it is Stefan Carpenter from Deftones Signature Guitar, uh, but with a lot of modifications. So first and foremost, what I did was I got rid of both of the pickups. So this guitar comes standard with two Fishman Fluence uh, signature pickups of the guitarist, and I didn't really like how they sounded. And also for some reason, I don't know why he does this, but in all of his signature models, he always has a bridge and a metal humbucker. And I really didn't like that because I was noticing when, when I was playing this guitar, the pickup was like right there. So my pick kept scratching it and I just didn't really like that. Um, so I decided to get a new pick guard cut which covers the hole where the old pickup was. So now it's just a single bridge pickup. I also took out the Fishman pickups and this is a single uh, Seymour Duncan Nazgul pickup in here. Um, and then since I got rid of the other pickup, I didn't need any controls. So I got rid of the tone control and the pickup selector because there's no pickups to select anymore. So it's just got that single volume now, nice and cool. I still am in love with this sparkle finish. Sparkly green looks so, so good. Um, and then the other mod I did to it was I got rid of the stock ESP locking tuners and I put on some Graph Tech ratio tuners instead. Um, I currently have this tune to drop F, so it's very low and it sounds really good because this is a 27 inch scale length seven string. So it's the same scale length as most eight string guitars. So you can tune it really low, really easily. I think on this one, I'm running like nine to 80 or something like that. Um, but I can't quite remember at this point in time. But yeah, absolutely beautiful guitar and I love it so much more now that I modded the hell out of it. Okay, next up is my Fast Guitars Orion 7 string. So this is my newest Fast Guitar that I have. It's very similar to this Solar Guitar in the sense that it also has that kind of black distressed finish. Um, Fast Guitars calls this the midnight finish, I believe. Once again, it basically means the same thing. It's Swamp Ash and you can feel and see the actual grain of the Swamp Ash. Um, this one has the Seymour Duncan Alpha and Omega pickups, which are of course Mark Holcomb from Periphery Signature pickups. And I absolutely love this set of pickups. I think this might be my favorite from Seymour Duncan. Um, I haven't tried anything else that I've liked as much as this, but uh, yeah. So I might be needing to get some more of these and some other guitars at some point. Um, this one has a roasted maple neck, which you can see there. So it looks almost black, but it's actually just a very, very dark maple. And then it has stripes of, uh, I don't remember what it is. It's some kind of composite material like um, carbon fiber, but plastic, I don't remember. So sorry, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Um, this one's gotten scratched up a bit because I, this is probably the guitar that I've used the most over the past year. I don't know what it is about this guitar, but every time I pick it up, it just sounds so good. Absolutely love it. Um, this one has a three-way pickup selector, single volume knob. Um, I had to throw a little bit of green on there, so I threw a green 
volume knob and green uh, clip locks on there. This one's 26 and a half inch scale length, uh, which is pretty standard for seven strings. And this one also has the GraphTech ratio locking tuners, which I really like. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty basic guitar, but I really, really like this one. And I've used it a lot, as you can see by all the little scratches everywhere on it. But this guitar has been awesome to me and I still love it a lot. Okay, next up is a guitar from Balaguer Guitars. This is their archetype model. This one is a six string standard scale length, 25 and a half inch. Um, I met the guys at Balaguer uh, at NAMM last year as well. They were super awesome. And uh, after NAMM, we connected and ended up working together. And they sent me over this one to use on my channel, which I actually really like uh, quite a lot. Um, the neck profile on this one is probably the thing that's the most noticeably different than any other of my guitars. Um, it's more of like a, I guess you would call it a D shape instead of a C where it has like these really pronounced, um, let's call them shoulders of the neck. Like it almost feels like a little bit more square than round, I guess is the best way to put it, but not in an uncomfortable way. In fact, I think I actually like this more because I primarily use seven and eight string guitars. So I actually like having a thicker neck on a six string, it helps it not feel like as much of a toy because I'm not used to having such a small guitar. Um, this one also has that distressed Swamp Ash finish, this time in purple though, of course. Um, these are Balaguer's own pickups. I think they're called the Feral Humbucker pickups, I'm pretty sure. Uh, volume, tone, five-way selector. Um, it also has, I'm not sure what brand of locking tuners these are. They're not hip shot. They look like they're Grover maybe, or they might be Gra Balaguer's own brand. I can't quite remember. Um, this one has the hip shot bridge. Uh, I have this tuned to drop C because that's the six string tuning that I'm most commonly recording. And yeah, this guitar has been awesome. Um, when I got it, it was in a little bit of a shipping accident and the pickup was a little bit loose and it definitely needed a setup, but the guys at Balaguer were super awesome. And, uh, you know, I went to a local guitar tech who fixed it all up and they totally reimbursed me. So that was awesome. FedEx just dropped the ball on that one. But yeah, I've, I've really come to love this guitar. And uh, yeah, it's very cool. It's got this like very streaky ebony fretboard. Um, I think it's just a plain maple neck or sorry, roasted maple neck by the looks of things. I would love to try either a seven string or like a super baritone six string from Balaguer at some point in the near future. But for now, this guitar has been great to me and uh, it looks great as well. Okay, next up we got another seven string guitar. This one is a GOC Materia seven string. Um, again, I think I reached out to GOC after I saw Nick Nocturnal using one of their guitars in one of his videos because I thought that looked really cool. And it turns out that they were making something even cooler. So we've had this probably in the works since I think like 2018, I'm pretty sure is when I reached out to them and it took them a while to finish it, but they did like a, a run of a bunch of these. And uh, I think mine looks pretty beautiful. I still have to put uh, a uh, strap lock in there or strap pin in there. I forgot to do that. I just realized, but I don't really play this guitar standing up. So I kind of forgot about it. Um, I think I have this one in drop G sharp. Um, this one is of course a multi-scale fan fret. So I think it goes 25 and a half inch on the top to 27 on the low. So it's nice because you can get that low tuning uh, down there as well, because again, it's got that 27 inch scale length. Um, this is all completely stock. I haven't done anything to it. It's got, again, a swamp ash body with that kind of exposed wood grain. You're seeing a trend here, I guess. Um, it's got GSC's own pickups. Uh, it did come with guitarmery pickups of some sort, but I decided not to put them in and I just left them as stock because I thought that their pickups actually sounded really good. Um, I think GOC has improved these a little bit since I got this. I think they released like an updated hardware because I did notice that the either the bridge or the head headpiece, I can't remember which, but one of the two slips a little bit. Um, but I think they released new hardware where you can self install that and fix it up. Um, I just haven't bothered because it hasn't really bothered me too much. But yeah, this is a very cool, very compact guitar. It is absolutely tiny compared to my other guitars. And uh, yeah, it's really cool. Fun to, uh, you know, travel with, super small. Like you can hide it super easily if you need to hide a guitar for some reason. Yeah, that's pretty much it. GOC Materia, very cool. Okay, next up is one of the oldest guitars in my collection. Uh, this is my Ibanez RG852, which I have heavily modified uh, to look pretty much like a replica of Justin Lowe from After the Burial's guitar. Um, rest in peace to Justin Lowe. He is one of my favorite guitarists of all time. He's the guitarist that got me into playing eight strings and also my obsession with neon green. So 
you know, when I had the opportunity to get a guitar that looked more like his, I had to take it. Well, actually, I didn't get a guitar that looked like his. I had to mod it. Um, so it ended up being a pretty costly project, but I'm super, super happy with how it came out. Um, so I did a lot of mods to this. Basically what I did was I got a used Ibanez RG852, which normally comes in like a sparkly black finish. So I got one of those that was like pretty beat up because I didn't really care because I was refinishing it anyways. Um, I took out the pickups, which I think were, I don't know, probably EMG 808s or something. So I put Seymour Duncan blackouts in there because that's what Justin used. Um, this part Justin didn't use, but I wanted to have it anyways. So there's actually a kill switch down here which is like a, um, it only engages when you hold it down basically. Um, and if you plug the guitar in, it actually lights up green, which is super cool. Um, this one has a three-way pickup selector, single volume knob. Um, I think that the tuners are Lock and Goto tuners. This one's a 27 inch scale length as well, which all Ibanez eight strings are. Uh, and of course, most notably, it's refinished in neon green, just like Justin's was. This guitar is super sentimental to me and I will absolutely never get rid of it. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this one. Absolutely love this guitar, super heavy. And I have this in F standard, again, because that's primarily the tuning that After the Burial used on their eight strings. So that's this one right here. Okay, up next is the first of my two fast guitars, Roamers. Uh, this one is the six string in this kind of avocado burst finish as people like to call it. Uh, it's got a beautiful Buckeye Burl maple top which looks absolutely stunning. Um, it has the DiMarzio Titan pickups, which are Jake Bowen from Periphery Signature pickups. Um, it has hip shot locking tuners, and this one is a Swamp Ash body. Uh, and then the neck is that roasted maple with uh, strips of normal maple. Uh, ebony fretboard, 25 and a half inch scale length because it's a six string and that's the standard. Um, I usually have this one in drop C, but Recently, I've actually had it in E standard and drop D for a series of videos. Um, and I might actually leave it in this tuning because I don't really need two six strings in drop C. So this might become my E standard slash drop D guitar instead. Uh, yeah, this guitar has been with me for a while now and I absolutely love it. Everything about it is perfect and that finish is so beautiful. All right, next up is the oldest guitar in my collection. This is the first fast guitar that I ever got. This is a Romer eight string. This is what started my partnership with Fast Guitars, so it means a lot to me. It's got tons of dings and scratches and cracks all on the finish, because I have played it a lot. Um, as with my last drummer, it's also got the Swamp Ash back and the roasted maple neck with, uh, this one doesn't have maple stripes. I think it has Venge stripes, I'm pretty sure. Um, again, hip shot locking tuners. The only thing I don't like about this one is there's no string through going on in the body. All of the strings are top loading, which at the time I built this guitar, I didn't really think of that, uh, which is why I've never done that again. It's not a huge deal, but you know, if I were to build this guitar again, I would definitely get string through instead of having that top mounted thing because it's a little weird. Um, this one has bare knuckle cold sweat pickups. Uh, it's a fan fret guitar, so it's 25 and a half inch on the top. It's 27 inch. This one's also tuned to drop E because again, that is the eight string tuning that I most commonly use. Um, this one also has kind of an avocado-ish finish. Uh, it's like a black to green to yellow burst. Looks absolutely beautiful. It's got that white binding, DiMarzio clip locks. Um, that's pretty much it for this guitar. Got these big block inlays, which are fan fret with the angle of the neck, which looks super cool. Uh, yeah, this guitar has been with me for, I think four years now, and it is definitely not going anywhere. Absolutely love this thing. Okay, and the last fast guitar in my collection is my Fast Guitars Orion 9 string. This is an Orion model, much like my 7 string model, except of course, it's an obnoxious neon green finish over a quilted maple top, which looks so beautiful. It's also got um, an inlay of my initials on the 12th fret, which is super cool, and none of my other guitars have a personalized inlay in that, like that rather. So that's very, very cool and very unique for this guitar. Um, this one has hip shot locking tuners as well. It has EMG 909X pickups because there's not too many options for nine string pickups. And out of the ones I tried, I liked these ones the best. Um, this one also has a white bridge, which is super cool. I've never seen any other guitar that has a white bridge. And I really like having this mixture of white and black hardware. Looks awesome. Three-way pickup selector, single volume knob, uh, 28 inch to 30 inch scale fan fret neck. Um, this one is a Swamp Ash back. As you can see, one of my strings kind of sticks out there because it's too thick, but oh well. Swamp Ash back, 
uh, maple neck with these uh, composite material stringers to reinforce it. Uh, this one has a bird's eye maple fretboard. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is probably one of my most beautiful guitars, if not the most beautiful guitar I have. And uh, I will definitely never let this one go because it means a lot to me. Oh yeah, also I have this tuned to either C sharp standard or double drop B depending on what I'm doing. I don't use this guitar too much, so it doesn't see that much use, but every time I pull it out, I just have to stop and stare because it looks so good. Okay, and last but not least is my Dingwall NG25 five string bass guitar. This is my dream bass. I still can't believe I have it. It's got this insanely beautiful neon green swirl finish, which they stopped making. So I don't think that you will ever be able to find one of these again, unless someone's selling one, I guess. Um, it's all completely stock. I haven't changed anything on it. It's got that dark glass preamp right there, which makes this thing sound absolutely monstrous. I have it tuned to drop A. Um, and then since I only have one bass, basically what I do is I have a pitch shift pedal and I just pitch shift drop A to wherever I need to go. Um, this is a, what is it? I think it's 32, no, 34 to 37 inch scale fan fret design. Um, I'm using Ernie Ball's uh, super long scale strings, which I believe are like, I think it's like an 80 to 130 or something like that. Um, yeah, hip shot tuners, everything is completely standard. Got that maple neck. Yeah, so this bass guitar will never go anywhere. I would love to get another Dingwall as a four string so I can use that for kind of more six string material. Um, but in the, for the time being, pitch shifting it is not so bad. So yeah, beautiful bass guitar, neon green swirl. Absolutely love this thing, it's a beast. All right guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Once again, this is my guitar collection as of December, 2019. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you want to see my other guitar collection videos and see how much it's changed over the years, definitely go check those out. Um, I want to give a big shout out to all my Patreon members whose names are on the screen at this point in time. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon member, you can get things such as your name on the screen, audio downloads for all of my videos, as well as the stem downloads for all of my videos. So if you're interested in any of that, go check it out. It's linked in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to reading your comments as always, and I'll see you guys next time.